Good morning. It's time for Wake Up Awatuki. All right, so today uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 22. We kind of touched on this story a couple weeks ago, and I had to have so much self-control because I get this cool revelation out of here, but I couldn't like throw it out there yet because right. uh, I wanted to teach it at a different time. And so uh, we're looking in Luke chapter 22. This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's, and he's praying, right? This is right before he's going to be arrested, mm -hmm. right after they've had uh, the Last Supper. Right. And um, so they're at the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. It says, coming out, he went, this is uh, Luke 22, verse 39. Uh, he went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. It says, and, and then as he was withdrawn from them, about a stone's throw, he knelt down and prayed. And then it says, uh, he says, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. You know, that's, that's what a great lesson is for that, is when we, when we have made that decision that I have submitted my will to his will, there's a strengthening that comes. Absolutely. Well, one of the other gospels even says that he tells his disciples that he's so sorrowful even unto death. Right. Right? And so how do we get past that kind of sorrow? The only way is to submit to God's will. Right. And so uh, and it says, then an angel appeared to strengthen him. And then it says in verse 44, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. What's interesting is that the other gospels don't say this, why I picked uh, Luke's account. Mm -hmm. uh, it explains why they were sleeping. You right. know, when you read it over in Matthew, and it, I, if it had kind of preached at me before, right. you know, don't you care enough about Jesus that you don't even care, you're just sleeping while he's working. And, but, but Luke, you know, because Luke is the physician. Right. When you read the gospel of Luke, you find things in here that he really, he focuses in on sort of the human condition. Right. Right. He He's focuses very holistic in, in his approach. Yeah, because you know a physician at that time wasn't okay. just about your physical right? well. No. It, a, a doctor cared about your mental well-being mm -hmm. and 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 the, the psychology, whether as what it was called then, but you know how you felt about things. So Luke tends to zero in on the physical, how people were mm -hmm. feeling both physically and emotionally, mm -hmm. and so Luke uh, here it zeroes in on the fact that why were they sleeping because of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. You ever, there, there's sometimes when things are going on in your life that when there's, when it's fear or anxiety, you can't sleep. Right. You ever been in a place that you're just so sad, it's almost like a depression. Right. That all you can do is sleep. Right. And so, uh, so Jesus comes again now in verse 46 and he said to him, why do you sleep? Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. Which is so interesting that he asks, why do you sleep? Because if they were sleeping for sorrow, and he knew that too, mm -hmm. he was basically asking, why are you sorrowful? And right. it's because they couldn't see what was ahead, even though Jesus could. Right, because not only are they not Jesus, but you know they're not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Mm -hmm. right? this, this is kind of what Jesus is, he's working on it. Right. Right, so that they can have I'm the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> right. And so, you know, he's looking at them and realizes they can't, they can't get it. Right. They don't understand what's going on or what's happening. And so they've heard what Jesus just said, some things when they were at dinner that, you know, that don't compute to them. Right. And they're kind of freaked out about it. Mm -hmm. And so they've gotten to a point where they're so sorrowful. And here we find out, if we put the, the Gospels together, that the, 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 those who he's talking about right here are probably just Peter, James, and John. Because he went up, went to Mount, the Mount of Olives with all of them, but it says then, uh, in, I believe it's in Mark's, that he went a little bit further right. with Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. So this was his inner circle. Right. And, uh, you know, you look at now what was going to happen next. So, so what's the temptation he's talking about? Like, don't the Pray that you don't fall into temptation. He says that twice so far, he says right? He it twice here. And, you know, he's saying, pray that you won't fall into temptation. He's not talking about just kind of run-of-the-mill sin. Make sure you're praying if you're... That's the problem with Christians today. That's why they sin so much. You don't pray enough. Right. No, no. The temptation he's talking about is that you are going to fall into the trap of doing what your flesh would say to do. Right. As opposed to, well, how did he get strengthened? 
right? He was, he had this weight upon him. What, why is his, he's so sorrowful? I mean, yes, certainly he knows physically what's going to be happening to him, but it is the weight of all the condemnation of mankind from beginning to end was on him at that moment. You know how you feel when you know, when you have that guilt on you of, of when you know you've blown it and you've messed up big time. No, this is like all of mankind is on, it's on him at once. Well, and he was going to have to be separated from Father God, which has never happened since the beginning of time or before the beginning of time. Right. And he was he knew that separation was coming right. so that we would never have to be separated that way from God. And that separation was going to be devastating. Right. And so what what is Jesus what was his response? He prayed. What right. was he doing in the garden? He was praying. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what was he praying? He was just talking with his father, right? And so what we need to do in our time when sorrow hits us mm-hmm. is, is what Jesus says here. Okay, when that comes, pray, right? Spend some time with, with your father, God. Spend mm-hmm. some time talking with him about, you know, and it's okay. I know sometimes we don't pray the perfect prayer and we say things and we're talking to God and, and we're not perfect in it, but it's okay. He gets it. He wants you to talk with him, stick with him. Because if you don't, you're going to fall into temptation of doing what your flesh wants to do. And it happened a little bit, right? Peter goes and he's trying to stop the arrest by cutting off the ear of a mm-hmm. soldier. Right. And then he goes and he denies Christ. And all these things happen. Why? Because of the temptation that came. And so we want to, in those times when things get tough, mm-hmm. is the time that we pray so that we don't fall into that temptation. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. I love that when we talk about Jesus submitting his will to God's will, it's you know, when we hear people pray, oh, if it be your will, that's not what Jesus wasn't praying your will be done because mm-hmm. he didn't know God's will. He was praying your he, will be done because he did know God's will. He, he was he was praying a prayer of agreement to say, I know what your will is. And the man part of me doesn't want to do this, but I'm submitting to it. Right. And then he was strengthened. And then he was and strengthened. So that's how... We need to get in and know God's will, come into agreement with it. And the good news is, is maybe I want you to take the wrong idea from this story, that sometimes God's going to, his will for you is, is going to be painful. Is be pain and death. <laughs> no, Jesus, Jesus did that. Mm-hmm. that. That was, he was doing it so that we don't have to. Yeah. God's will is not for you to fail and not for you to die, not for you to be in pain. No, His will, and so, but it looks like it to us sometimes that if we aren't submitted, if we haven't prayed, we haven't pressed in, it'll look that way and we'll create it ourselves. Absolutely. But let's pray. Be strengthened. Amen. Lord, I pray for those that are watching today, Lord, and, and wherever they may be, maybe they are in a time right now of that sorrow and that time of uh, of testing in their lives, but that they would pray, they would draw near to you, that they would not be, fall into temptation to do what the flesh wants to do, but would be wholly submitted to the plan that you have, the will you have for them, Lord. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you're in the Ahwatukee area, we'd love to see you at church on Sunday. But otherwise, well, we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend.